Hi. Hi. Welcome back. We're back. We're chill today. That's right. I hadn't had a coffee, and I think coffee does nothing for Carson at this point in his life. It drains my bank account. <laughs> it's doing one thing. <laughs> what gives you something to do? He's got a little. Uh, he's got this little espresso setup thing where he. Oh uses yeah. The, he uses the forces of nature to make his coffee and stuff. So it's like probably these muscles. Yeah, that's right. It's like a. It's like a hobby. It, no more is it wasting five dollars. It's I have a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> well. I would argue I am actually saving money. At this no, no, point. no, no, no. I understand. I would go to the coffee shop. Like my wife and I would go to it way too much. Uh, my wife is about to go to day shift. Uh, she's a nurse, which Very is cool. great. We've been waiting on that for a long time. Okay. Very excited. Um, but she was on night shift forever. So like we were on opposite schedules. And one of the things we would do is she would wake up, we would go to the coffee shop or I'd have coffee for her, that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. It was just like, one of those things that it was it was just nice to bond over, um, and then we got addicted to it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so, kind of with the new year coming, we were like, "Okay, what what's what can we try to buy ourselves to stop doing that and kind of save a little bit more money while also like I always love the hobby of coffee. I've done pour sure. overs for a long time, whatever. Uh, you know, marathon the, um. You know, Lance Hedrick and James Hoffman videos and all that kind of stuff. That, and they they are all kind of like universally like, do not get into espresso if you do not need a new hobby. Which me, you know me, I need new hobbies. Oh, yeah. Not This true guy's looking. Um, I felt like I was already like kind of dialed in enough to it to know that I was going to mm-hmm. go a little overboard. So we went... We got some good stuff. We got a Flare 58, which is like, it's a manual espresso mm-hmm. thing, but it's the one that preheats itself. So you're like, you grind it really fine. You put in the thing and then you just pull it down and you're watching this uh, gauge to sh- show you like how much pressure you're putting into it. Yeah. That kind of stuff. And then more important than the thing that actually brews the espresso is the grinder. So I got a niche grinder. Okay. It's great. Um, for the price, even though the price seems very high for the big thing is like most coffee grinders or a lot of coffee grinders you'd buy at like a normal store. Don't go fine enough for espresso okay. and are maybe not consistent enough. Um, anyway, so we're super into the espresso thing. We make yeah. coffees once or twice a day now. That's cool uh, for you guys. Just buy some beans. Yeah. Buy the beans. Get them local beans, Manchester I, uh, coffee. Okay. Nice. You're still supporting the locals. I think Absolutely. I think the funniest part about this opening conversation in our niche podcast about bass is that it became incredibly more niche <laughs> by just really taking a tiny percent of the tiny yeah, percent I'm of sorry. people. That How many of you this. have turned this off? <laughs> <laughs> so well, was, with that being said, but to the one person that you're nailing that is both into bass and espresso, <laughs> like manual uh, uh, pulling yeah. shots. I mean, we're killing it. I mean, well, we're you doing say great. that, but we just interviewed Dave Hartley from the War on Drugs. Yeah, and they have like we're go listen to that one, uh, like a road case travel espresso setup for their band, which is so cool. And it, it's it's a, it's just a fun you know ritualist. Thing yeah, in the morning, you know, you start your day with it. And if you've traveled as, or really traveled at all, period, yeah. and you're a fellow coffee addict, you realize you wake up and you're like, have to go find a local coffee shop. Maybe that coffee shop's good. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a far drive. Maybe you have to pay for yeah. parking. And it's like a whole thing yeah. to get good coffee on the road. Yeah. But it's kind of important to have something that starts but your that day. that ritual is great. So it's good. Yeah, yeah it's good. You explore the town. Interesting. Maybe it's the first time you're not with your band mm-hmm. for the last day. I've talked about the guys on the bus. I've talked with the guys on the bus about like tr- maybe bringing like a pour over or not a mm-hmm. uh, not a pour over thing. What are those things called? Aero Aero Press. Aero Press. I want to bring guys, an Aero yeah. Press uh, on. You know, just so we can all like when everybody's up, you're like, okay, let's let's get some coffee let's rolling. Then you make a coffee, walk off the bus, and explore whatever city you woke up in. You know, mm-hmm. it's just weird. So yeah, okay, fun coffee. All right, and <laughs> not to keep hitting the coffee thing. Let's go to, to make it personal. I'm diabetic, and it's like. I have to, I have to cut, yeah, shut up. I have to cut things out of my diet and, you know, I'm losing a little bit of weight right now because I'm really just focusing on, on my diet and I changed some medications and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, all that matters, it's like, 
this is the last thing I have. <laughs> this is all I have. <laughs> I don't put Face sugar in, in my espresso. Heart. I mean, legitimately, like, this is all I have left. Please don't take it away yeah. from me. <laughs> Plus, I mean, it's just so cool to be like, yeah, I just drink a shot of espresso and no, start my day. No, I feel day. like a tool every time I say it. I just, no, no. I, I don't want to be a tool, but. I don't want to be able to brag about it. Don't hear it as like, I don't want to like no. walk up to randoms and be like, oh yeah, I just like take espresso straight. What no. up, NPC? No. <laughs> I want to, for my own sake, be able to drink a shot of espresso straight. You can't do it? Well, I can, but it's not. I'm going to force you on camera. It's not enjoyable. All right, we're going to upload a new video of just me <laughs> just, drinking a shot of espresso that Carson pulls. And it's going to be annoying. It's going to be like a YouTube short. And uh -huh. I'd be like, you won't believe You're not going to believe. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. A grown man tries espresso for the first time. <laughs> Clickbait these you days, You won't buddy. believe what happens next. And then nothing happens at the and end. No, he just drinks it. Yep, you don't. And even... then he probably like maybe puckers a little bit because it's the the beginning of the shot's a little yep. sour. Mm -hmm. Then it neutrals out, and then it has like a good finish. Mm -hmm. mm. I want to to get there, but we'll see. But do you drink black you, coffee? I'm, I'm new to it. Uh, on planes in the morning, when I just cannot bring myself to get like a Coke Zero, which I think is like the peak of soda. Mm. I think it's I take Coke Zero over a Coke. Every day of the week. I love it. Coke Zero, like your noble DI, is a cult. <laughs> Coke Zero people are in the trees, dude, and they walk out of the woodwork and they're like, oh yeah, no, Coke Zero, I will take over every other soda. I and have I'm a one of them. family member by marriage that drinks so much Coke Zero <laughs> that his doc and his doctor is telling him to stop <laughs> that he gets like kidney stones and stuff like all the time, like Bad. I had a friend get a bunch from, uh, it was generic Dr. Pepper. It was the Meyer brand Dr. Pepper. And his doctor was like, yo, like, dude, cut this out. And I've been trying to drink the less. I know it's probably not good, but I don't know, have you had a Coke Zero? It's delicious. I uh, know. I'm not feeling it, but that's it's okay. It's so good. Well, when I can't bring myself to get a Coke Zero at 630 in the morning, Delta flight, jumping from Lexington to Atlanta, I get a black coffee, and I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm just going to do it. It's great. You dip the Biscoff cookie into it? Gosh, I love that Biscoff cookie. Yeah, dude, that's the best. You want to talk about the best part about that's fly the fly dates? <laughs> it's not somebody else setting up your rig. It's not playing in a cool, different town. It's not the fun of the flight. It is that Biscoff cookie. <laughs> I love them so much. I love Biscoff cookies. This is actually something you don't know about me. I love Biscoff oh. cookies so much that I have like a handful of friends that every time they fly – They'll bring me a Biscoff cookie. Oh wow! When they get off the plane, and nice. you know, I see them next, they'll be like, like one of my friends. You're like twenty percent off Dad Closet for every Biscoff cookie. Absolutely, whatever you want. You this is trade. legally binding. You can just trade me. No, one of my <laughs> friends, Neil, she'll uh, she'll like show up or whatever, and she'll be like, "Oh, I have some in purse," and she'll and I know exactly what it is, and <laughs> she'll pull out a Biscoff cookie from me, like, "Yeah, that's a real friend." It's a random Biscoff cookie of the day is great. I love it. <laughs> so yes. I do drink a little little bit of black coffee. I'm trying to more. It's always every venue uh, usually has black coffee. Every yeah. hotel is going to have black coffee. Like even yeah. if you're staying in like Podunk, USA, in a hotel, I can still get Holiday Inn coffee, and it's it's got to work for you. Like sure. again, there's something that I love about that. This is my morning thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's just it's just nice. And you know, if you're in trying to think of the, I was I've been in so many random towns. I was in this like random town in Iowa and it's like you're not going to get a coffee, you're not going to get anything crazy, you're going to get a gas station yep. and that's it. And sometimes you just got to be okay with black coffee. So I'm working on it. I'm telling you, Keep I'm working, working on it. it. I'm working on it. But also my You band, don't have to settle for mediocrity though, Nick. But like I want to be okay with it, you know. I think that's the definition of settling for mediocrity. But like not if you don't see it as an issue. Hold That's on. true. Like, let me think true. about it. It's like there's a huge difference no, in I'm us in you. our I'm, in our I'm, gear standards, right? Are you talking to Gideon? It came up on my watch, man. <laughs> Hi, Gideon. We were shooting a video the last. We were shooting another video, and my phone just starts blow. I'm talking like it's like a text, a text, 
uh, an Instagram DM. And by this point, I'm like, I'm an idiot for not putting that on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> and then I start getting a phone call, and Carson's just looking at me. He's just like, <laughs> I'm like, I'll fix it in post. Can I help you, sir? I was Can like, oh, gosh. Would you like to share with the class? It's fine. And then my neighbor has a has a chicken, a rooster. So hopefully you're and not that hearing that talks. in the microphone. That rooster goes off sometimes. Well, it's, I actually hope you do hear in the microphone because <laughs> it's ridiculous. You know, it's a little, it's charm. It's that sound of my studio, yeah. man. Furlong Creative just sounds like chickens. That's the, it's the that's, flavor. That's the tone. It's the, the tone <laughs> and the flavor. I mean, that chicken's out there. It's storming pretty hard right now. I bet that chicken's getting hit with, you know, rain. It's, it's, it's a not damp very, chicken. <laughs> it's not very happy right now. I'd be screaming too. Damp chicken is actually our <laughs> new punk rock project. Yes. Damp that chicken. damp chicken, man. Yeah. We've got two basses on the track, no guitars. Yep. That might work. Anyways, how about we talk about bass stuff? Oh, yeah. Uh, if you're still with us at this point. Yeah, yeah. just it's like, man, I listen to this bass podcast. All I've ever talked about is coffee and crappy hotels. This is crazy. Hey, super quick. We don't plug this enough. We have a reverb oh, link. Oh, gosh. Click the reverb link. <laughs> you don't have to like give us money oh. or anything. Click the reverb link and buy something yeah. you would normally buy. Yeah, whatever. All right. Whatever. Uh, this was your All ad right, break. All right, and back. Okay, so... I've been to a couple random little good shows. Hey. Um, coming on here soon is actually a buddy that uh, I had made friends with. I went and saw this band, Colony House. Yeah. They are great. Uh, it was one of the best mixes I've ever heard, and there were so many moments of serious bass clarity. Nice. That I... It's funny because in the modern day, <laughs> it's funny because like guitar tone, you're like, oh man, that tone is amazing. That tone cuts. That tone is this. And bass tone, you're like, I heard it. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, I heard it. <laughs> there was definition the Lord. in the bass tone. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so it was really, really cool um, to go see them. And then fast forward to uh, this week, I went and saw this band, Jude and the Lion, mm -hmm. who I've actually been into a while. They've got, it's actually, it's a really interesting band because they're- um, Is it Jude or is it Judah? Judah. Judah, okay. Judah, what did I say? I thought you said Jude, but I don't know. Oh, no. I haven't listened to them a ton. I believe if I misspoke, I'm sorry, but I meant Judah. Strike from the record. Judah. From the record. Let it be known. So I went and saw Judah and the Lion. Well, I'd seen them five years ago, maybe, okay. in town. I, it was like a Wednesday night. I saw them at a lecture hall. Nice. Uh, that uh, I literally had Econ 201 in. Uh, and they showed up on a Wednesday and played at when I was at UK, it's uh, the University of Kentucky uh, Wildcats. That's what I am. Graduated class of 2017 in the winter. Very cool. Um, nice. That's right. Nice plug there. That's right. Go Cats. <laughs> um, well, I saw these guys and they were touring as a five piece in a van, which was sick. Uh, but they like brought like for being you know just a van no I don't know how they brought all this stuff because the keys player was playing uh, he had two cents and then to the side he was doing all their sub bass nice. so he had this sweet moog and mm. then a full drum kit and then Judah um, was playing like acoustic and maybe some electrics but I know he was switching on and off so that means he had a pedal board yes he had at amp. least one pedal board and then. Uh, there's a mandolin player and a and a banjo player who both had boards for their stuff, and it was wild. And they used all these tracks. And they did they have amps? I don't remember, but they brought lights. I showed up. It was oh, me yeah. and like 25, 30 people. It was crazy. Fast forward to this week, I went and saw them. Completely different configuration in a really cool way because they're not touring with a full time banjo anymore it's just the mandolin guy but he'll play banjo on some stuff so he's like like ox. he's shooting both mm -hmm. all in like really sick tones he had an electric mandolin that he was using for like some soaring guitar leads like crazy guitar tone i was like this is awesome judah was playing acoustic he was playing electric and then he played mandolin on a song i'm like these guys are doing everything their mm -hmm. drummer was phenomenal uh their bass player Ended up playing like this sick SG for half the songs. Nice. That some would have like tracked bass. But then even cooler, their keys guy would walk around and grab a bass and he would play bass on some songs. And his the keys guy, dude, what his What's the bass player gonna do when he did it? Take a break? No, he's playing electric. The bass player would play electric. Yes, dude, nice. these guys are just they're just playing all the I stuff. I could not be in that band. But it was not like it wasn't like weird. It wasn't it wasn't clunky, let me switch. It was seamless. Mm -hmm. You'd just be like, you'd look up and you'd be like, who's playing that? Who's oh my gosh, the the keys guy's playing that bass line. That's crazy. <laughs> and the keys guy's rig was wild, dude. He had like 
three or four cents. And one of them, he was bringing one of those new prophets. Oh, and I was nice. like, Gosh, dog, I love that is prophet. so sick. So great show, really good mix. He had, I've never seen it before. It was a green on green P base. It was nice. like St. Patrick's Day green with oh. a St. Patrick's Day green pick guard. What kind of neck? Was it blonde? Like yeah, it was blonde. Maple? It okay. was a maple neck. I was hoping you'd say that. I feel like that'd be cool. Oh, that's the redemption yeah. for the base? Well, I mean, that that green on green plus the like dark yeah. rosewood is yeah. kind of a weird look. Oh, for but sure. But green on green with the bright maple, that sounds pretty cool. Maybe less weird. I don't know. It, yeah. Obviously, it's like a head turner when you see it, but yeah. you're like, I saw it and I was like, whoa. And then to take it even one step further... Dude's pants matched his base. He had green <laughs> pants on. I was like, these guys are great. Was it St. Patrick's Day? It was just St. Patrick's Day the other day. No, it was yesterday, which is a week after St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Maybe he's just feeling it. He's in yeah. the spirit. The but spirit of St. Patrick. Yeah, all that to say, it's just fun to go to a place and see some like just something shake it up, dude. They're just not yeah. a typical band. They've literally got like these like 808 grooves mm. with a mandolin part. They can they were popular like years ago right like uh, in our circles for sure i don't know that they'd hit a mainstream success like they're seeing now well i was i was about to say like i remember hearing about them when i was younger mm -hmm. and then they came out with that album it's like red and then it's got like colors in the middle of it it's like red or orange around the side i don't know um and people were like freaking out about oh, it pep talks maybe with the sports themed stuff oh i don't know i don't know mm. well our friend brett foster ordered like we were vinyl buddies mm -hmm. and he ordered like the special edition whatever of that album it came and they sent him two which was amazing what a and, gift. He, and he gave me one which is very nice of him because he's like i think that's great you should check it out i listened to it i thought it was super good we just got my dog this is the only time this has ever happened ever uh, one of my shelves has the bottom area as some some records that i have you know, now that we've already talked about espresso, just to let you in on the current <laughs> a little, I clean my records, I catalog them and alphabetize them. And I like, I'm pretty intense about it. So I had like a shelf of records waiting to be cleaned and sleeved and all that. And my dog grabbed it when I was at home and like destroyed the cover. Just utterly. It's the only time that's ever happened. And it's been years now too. Uh, my um, dog ate my physical disc of Grand Theft Auto five. And Back that to thing's you. Still alive? The dog is. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, no, he just chewed it up. He he just made it completely unusable. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> no. It's, yeah, that's the only time this ever happened, and that's my that's uh, Judah and the Lion. Judah and the Lion. Well, it's great, man. Uh, Becker was great until it was eaten. I need to hit that guy up. Uh, whoever's playing bass for them right now, because he was phenomenal. He's great. Cool. It's so fun to watch a bass player. Just, I mean, he was just a vibe jam and pick mm -hmm. bass. Lots of that cool P bass tone. I mean, he's a Nashville guy. They're a Nashville band. But then to be shredding on an sg mm -hmm. i was like this guy is the coolest that's kind of my next uh what you mentioned earlier my next thing it's like when you play music halls you know yeah usually you can maybe get a lighting guy or there's lights there that are mm -hmm. that are decent um but like just a tick under that the lights are just like really crappy or kind of um i don't know adds very little to the experience because mm -hmm. it's like some somebody just like turning them on kind yeah. of thing. That's why I hit the button. Um, yeah, I've, I've tried to think about like how could I design the stage of a show in a way that fits in a ba van mm -hmm. that does not seem, I don't know, amateur, but seems like cool. Intentional. Like Wolfpack even did at that live from Madison Square Gardens. They like recreated their childhood like basement recording fan practice area, uh -huh. which was super cool. So it's like, what are those little things that if we wanted to kind of go with a theme, is it a couple lamps? Is it a couple whatever? Mm -hmm. And tie that into like an easy lighting system, even to the point of like, I don't know, I could have it next to me. Like if I had faders or something, like I could have it next to me on stage. Ableton. I don't want. No, we're not running tracks yet. Time code. <laughs> yeah, you could. The War on Drugs stuff. They run MIDI time code yeah. from a drum machine. They don't use click. They use the drum machine in place of click. Even when the drum machine is not in the house and the audience hears it, it's it's still giving them tempo in all of their ears. That's sick. And it's sending MIDI to midi clock mm -hmm. 
to at least one pedal on every single one of the instrumentalists uh pedal boards that's so cool or like uh, for all the time based stuff so it's in sync with the drum machine mm-hmm. even if the drum machine is not heard by the audience that's so cool genius yeah dude there's i mean there's cool ways to do it i, I mean did you see the i mean will you watch the 1975 yeah, uh yeah, square garden mm-hmm. they did that same kind of like domestic yep. couches and lamps yep. but they they They've always got a way to just like ramp it up, mm-hmm. what, even one more mm-hmm. tier. Because right before that, it was like LED wall on LED wall on LED wall. Dude, like on the ceiling, they had yeah. these boxes on the side of the stage. Like, yep. I mean, they had a moving treadmill at one point, and then to pull it back and have like not a pixel of LED to go to this these lamps and these like mm-hmm. really cool. They were playing with like lighting, no by, moving fixtures, none. They were lighting behind the. Um, like behind the set pieces and they were, mm-hmm. they were using like these TVs on stage, which were really, really cool. And it's just what a, what a flex to be able yeah. to be like, you know what? We can, we can make something work with anything we want. Like yep. we don't need that. Like obviously they can use it really well, mm-hmm. but then we don't need that. So there is something cool. about like making an atmosphere on stage with what you're bringing with how it looks, whatever, like the visuals are kind of, when you when you take it a couple steps above, like we're just going to show up and play songs, mm. which there's nothing wrong with that, and a lot of bands that's great, especially like really organic stuff. Or, but but if you're trying to play into a theme or really like get someone to be inspired by something, it's I'm just trying to think of what are the next things that we can do to get you in a mindset that kind of transforms the stage. Also, that would be highly inappropriate if you're opening for someone. Yeah. Like to have these light fixtures and this, all these themes or whatever. It's even kind of weird, like maybe in the country circuit, when someone brings like side banners with their face on it and their name yeah. on it and stuff, yeah. and then take it down when the opener goes on. I don't know. Have you seen that? How do you feel about that? Yeah, no, I think it's. So, are you talking about like uh, the stand ups by the merch table? Or are you talking about like a banner on the thing that was I've say seen people take the, the stand ups yeah. and put it on stage? Oh, I've only seen that at like the bar circuit, like down in Nashville. Well, right, I've seen that too. Where it's like they're trying to advertise who they are, like a QR but code. But I've, I've kind of seen it on like a moderately sized country show. Interesting. Um, so they'll put that stuff on stage, or they'll put banners up that have yeah. their names and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. I say that, really common is the scrims that set up with like right. they're like these folding and they're like these um, stretchy cloths right. that you know you put them up one or two or whatever. Um, and I guess that do next you guys step, do that? We do. Cool. We do. And even on opening circuits, it's it's very common. Cool. Uh, in, well, I mean, it in makes the circle sense. I'm in, to, and because you just they're so movable uh, that you you just pull them off mm-hmm. um, as you're as you're going off. Like hands can grab them, it, right. you know. Because if you're if you're headlining, then they're just in the back. You're fine. And if you're opening, and then we're on the you know these. Festival stages, there's mm-hmm. always tons of people that can just grab it real quick. And they're, they're yeah. not huge or whatever, but I will say- Well, it makes sense to have them. It's just, I've I've been in bands that are being opened for, uh-huh. and we're not bringing that kind of stuff, and the opener does. Oh, see, maybe so, I mean, that's Maybe weird. that's bad on us, but it I don't know. It just seems odd. It's There's nothing yeah, wrong with it either. Like, you know, every person that takes a cell phone picture is going to see that it says- your artist's name and probably has like, you know, an Instagram handle or a Facebook handle or band camp or something like that. Band camp. Nice. Band camp. Yeah. I don't know. Those, the banners are, the scrims are, like I said, they're just standard at this point with where, right. it's with where we are. It's bringing it. Yeah. Um, but what's really funny is they are, uh, outside they're great in theory, but we, <laughs> And I got really scared because the scrim is directly behind me and my rig, and it was we were playing outside of a uh, lake in Florida where the wind is abundant. Mm. And buddy, let me tell you, <laughs> that thing's going down. It's going down. It's taking you with it. And I'm not taking my hands off that P base, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So we had uh, we had to like really janky like strap it down because we were playing on this it was this festival and there was band after us and then after them was nico moon and after that was chris jansen um buy me a boat guy you know chris jansen from to catch a predator that's chris hansen <laughs> <laughs> or chris harrison 
I think it's Hanson. He's from The Bachelor. All right. <laughs> Look at us. Smart guys. Yeah, well, buy me a boat. I've, I've played that song. Yeah. Well, we were like, <laughs> there was three bands after us, basically. So the stage is like, it was huge at the start. Yeah, but, but at you're the pushed end, up. we are like yeah. in a line, you know? We are losing some real estate. Mm -hmm. And then we add the scrim, and I'm like, oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. And I see it, and I told, uh, I told the other guys in the band, I was like, I mean, we can put it up on the stage, but like, if this thing is gonna kill mm -hmm. me, like, we should probably factor that in. And it's not gonna, but like, it could fall on me in the middle of a song. Was this the one so, with the rain damage and stuff? No, was the same? no. Okay. Luckily, there was no rain. It, we got we got super super lucky. Blind Melon. That's a Blind Melon song. No rain. Where are my '90s kids at? Where's Jimbo at? Jimbo. Oh yeah, Jimbo loves <laughs> Blind Melon. I forgot about that. <laughs> did you ever listen to them? I did. Okay, uh, and you knew the song. I did you know the vaguely hit. know the hit. You know, you know, no rain. All right. the, the mix is so interesting that I yeah. need to like keep listening to it yeah. because if I remember correctly, it was like it felt very harsh to listen to. Yeah, but in comparison to how things are mixed now, yeah, sure. We'll come back to '90s mixes another time. I love '90s yeah, mixes. I, we, I, can I, talk about them I can't all talk about it at all. So. I love them. Uh, <laughs> well, that scram, we were like, okay. We're going to put it up there. So for some reason, we had had a bunch of like hand dumbbells. Mm -hmm. So we literally played this whole set with these hand dumbbells on the either side. And then on the back, oh, he, had, no. he had a wheel chalk that was pretty heavy. And then like a piece of wood or something <laughs> that we usually put under the trailer hitch if you ever have to drop it. And it just, I was like, it's funny because like everybody in the back, nobody could see it. But if you're in the front and you're like, is that gym equipment holding that <laughs> scrim down yeah. right now? Yeah. <laughs> so it, you know, it's it's just funny, and it that's cool. It it warbled, you know, and I got a little worried, but it stayed up. So cool. I was really grateful. <laughs> yeah, I was really grateful. But yeah, no, the scrims they they happen. They happen. Mm -hmm. Scrims happen. Scrims happen. Um, yeah, let's keep rolling. So uh, the other day, I was on the phone with Carson, and uh, he was going through just like a an inner turmoil of like, I, I have these bases and I want more bases. Uh, and he called me, he's like, oh, he sent me some texts. He's like, dude, I found this Yamaha. I want it. This is from my point of view. I'll let yeah. you take this story yeah. here in a second. But from my point of view, it's hilarious. Cause I know Carson and he gets, he gets thinking and it's, it's rolling. Mm -hmm. That ball is down the hill and about mm -hmm. to head off of a Olympic ski jump. Mm -hmm. And he's like, dude, I found this base. It's a decent price. And he sends me a text back like, like a minute later he's like i messaged him he's like sends me a text back he's like dude should i do it i didn't even respond at this point he's like i sent an offer in and i was like oh my gosh <laughs> yeah and he's like i mean i really shouldn't i really should but like but like i really want this base and i was like i mean yeah. it's like it was a good prize i mean the base is just beautiful it's that it was a <sighs> good price in the world of how inflated prices are right yes now. and i'll let you give all the details but then he just goes I bought it. And I was like, <laughs> did they take your offer? And he was like, no. I <laughs> he just went around. <laughs> he sent an offer and was like, I can't wait. And he just bought it. So Carson, tell yeah. the people what happened. Tell them your story. So, uh, man, and, and you should watch our BB5000 video um, that's out or coming out. But we'll see. The Yamaha BB5000 is my like holy grail base right now. That's it's good. my number one by far. 1984-ish. Um, um, all passive PJ 24 frets mm -hmm. looks super cool. Brass accents, Great. black or white. It's the great. white ones have turned by this point have turned a really yellow color because it was the colorway so was cream, cool. right? No, they called it cream. Oh, so I'm that pretty was sure just that white. sucker was white. Yeah. And now it's cream. Well, they call it cream, but I think they, they put the they little accent, accent on it. I was like, cream, ooh, cream a. we've got a Frenchman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. Well, it was, so that, we, we talked about it before, but the way that mm -hmm. white stuff from, white, like, paint from the 70s and 80s just ages, yeah. you either love it or you don't. And he loves oh, it. Oh, man, I love it. And it's not, I, I'm pretty, I'm 90% sure it is not nitro. It's not a nitro finish. Nice. But it is, it's a poly finish. Um, cause you can kind of see even on this one, um, for audio people, I'm sorry, you can't see this picking up my Yamaha base and it is, it kind of checks this way in the light every now and then you could see like mm -hmm. lines that just run this yeah. way. Um, that is not how nitro would age in my 
understanding. Um, anyway, yeah, tell people about it. It's super cool. Um, like I said, mother mother of pearl inlays on it. Looks awesome. Black brass, all that. So this one, yeah, was. They called it cream because it was white and it turned yellow. I was gonna say, is that nicotine, nicotine yellow. smoke or yellow? Yeah. <laughs> so cool. And it was a lot of these people rip out the electronics, put in active electronics in the 80s, and no. So we're talking original, that. all original, down to yeah. the tuners. So you message them. I message them. I ask about the weight of the instrument and if the neck buzzes. Okay. Because Big. they had zero return policy on there. And I was like, hey, you know, if this buzzes, I'm going to have to send it back if I buy it. Like, that is a that is a non-start for me. Under my fingers, I play really hard. Um, and so this action is kind of like a medium to medium high, and that's where I like to keep it. Um, anyway, they said action, action is great, doesn't buzz unless you're intentionally trying it to with the action where it is and um, weighs 9.2 pounds, which is like exactly like this one is. I don't really buy bases that are over 10 pounds. And every now and then, when you finally do find an original, it's mm-hmm. over 10 pounds. Um, so I'm like, man, this is perfect. I've been waiting on this. The price was okay, but it had the make it wasn't offer atrocious. Thing. Yeah. It wasn't atrocious. So I sent that offer and they had responded to my message like within five minutes. Yeah. Cool. Like, immediately Talking. and this was only posted 18 hours earlier okay so it's been I up for a offer. while and yeah. when something goes up on reverb i know in my head it's been on their local facebook marketplace for at least a month yeah well yeah <laughs> maybe not maybe if they know they can't but right. i just feel like that's the only time i put something on reverb yeah kind of a last resort if you can't get rid of it locally. yeah it's like all right i'll open it up to the broader audience yeah. um because who wants to ship a bass? But with a with a very niche instrument like that, also True. it's like you to get the money out of it that you probably need. You've got to find the community that would appreciate. Totally. That. Okay. Cool. Um. Anyway, all that to say, I got in the shower. I had sent in that offer. Um. It was fairly close to the asking price, and then I got out of the shower and I was just just like thinking, it, trying to like kind of walk away from my phone, not impulse buy an expensive instrument. And then, because uh, they don't, they just don't show up that often. And if they do, yeah. they ask stupid prices. Um, yeah, and nobody quick. buys them and they sit there. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, and I just decided, I was like, this is perfect. I've been looking for this specific instrument at this specific mm-hmm. weight. Been waiting for a girl I need like to you. strike on it now. Foreigner. And just, <laughs> yeah. Uh, even if I have to sell something, like, I just, I need to go ahead and get this while I know I can. Yeah. Figure it out later, which is, I would not suggest you doing that very often with money. <laughs> so we would call it um, gear addiction. Right. So I put in the full offer, purchase it. This is within 20 minutes of that first message. Then w- a couple minutes later, I get a message that says, your order has been refunded. Like the money had come out of my account. They're like, refund, canceling it. And they said- Which we were on the phone when you we got We were this. on the phone. I was talking to him. He's like, dude, I'm stoked. I'm just going to yeah. get it. It's going to be great. And then he goes- and I was like, hey, you still there? And he was like, says I just got refunded. I was like, what? <laughs> I I am beyond pit. So like I don't usually do this, but I messaged the person. I'm like, <laughs> what what's <gives>? going on? <laughs> like, and they said, Oh, I found a I found a buyer locally. We made a deal. And I was like, it's been 20 minutes. I don't yeah. believe you. No. And they were like, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have to ship it. I'm gonna sell it to this local buyer. And I'm just like, I don't know. It was report worthy, even though I don't think I could technically report them for that. I know it stinks. Um, I don't know that. I don't know that you have anything behind you, which is interesting because. So I'm just so pissed off about it. I've just se- yeah. Selling it, platforms like eBay always back the buyer. Yeah, always. And you would think that there would be some kind of reper- like repercussion for doing that. Yeah, I they it clearly was. They I did, get a mistake. They didn't like that I asked about the buzzy neck, mm-hmm. which I, I really think it was going to be great because yeah. if it plays 90% as good as this one, mm-hmm. I will be ecstatic. Mm-hmm. Um, and by all indications, it's the same. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was just so pissed off about it because it was actually, you know, I've been honestly looking for over a year 
for mm-hmm. kind of the perfect one. And this one, the price was good ish because with it being really yellowed, it was also dinged up like mm-hmm. on the finish and stuff. Yeah. And I thought it looked awesome. Yeah. Like, I was into it. Cause again, the electronics and everything were original. So I'm like, awesome. Great. Get some money off it. Look mm-hmm. cool without being like fake relic. And like, sure. I'm into it. Um, Anyway, just was super pissed off by it's that. It's a tough call, man. It's tough for that rug to get pulled to, out from under To go you. from like so high like, I got to so it. low. To, oh, man. Like I had text multiple friends been like, I'm gonna, I'm striking on this. I'm going to do this, whatever. And yeah, anyway. That that's stinks. my regular story. Maybe uh, it's a sign. You didn't need it. No, nah, I don't think it was. I no, think I, I think I needed it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Well, yeah. hope and you I find guess, something else, Reese, or in the near future. Well, me too, but I did. It's off camera. I did buy retail therapy. A a mid to early seven. I think like seventy four Ampeg B fifteen in original. You did, and we will talk about. Um, it. sounds freaking cool. When it's I first wild. got it, I didn't. I was trying to figure out what the deal was. I was just sitting with it, and I was like, "Man, this is so different." And then I put a mic on it. I put an RE20 on it. And I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. And then yeah, pretty cool. kind of the thing to me is like they, they can rattle when you bring the volume up. And so I am going to put something in front of it because when I, when I do crank it, it's overdrive is so cool. Mm-hmm. But I need to overdrive the preamp without bringing the volume too far up to yeah. get all the rattly stuff. So... I'm going to put something in front of it just to drive it a little bit more, but um, I'm learning about it. I'm so restoring cool. it a little bit, you know, buying a million things from fliptops.net, little little pieces and stuff. So fliptops.net. <laughs> yeah, man. That's that's where you get all the Ampeg. We are parts. in the smallest niche. <laughs> <laughs> fliptops.net. Fliptops.net. <laughs> <laughs> we've got your lugs we've got your screws i mean literally it's great that's ridiculous when, it, when that resource goes yard. away i mean i don't know what what i would do that's or really anybody who's trying to restore so funny stuff. dude yeah that's so funny i'm I mean i haven't got anything recently i i thought about rebuying an old 75 reissue jazz that I used to own. Mm, yeah, I played that one. Yeah, and it, every time I play it, I'm like, I want to love you because I love the way it looks. It's so cool. It's a great look. But then I play it, and I'm like, it's fine. It's it's natural black pick guard, then maple neck, black binding, black dots. Black or neck black, binding. Black box, yeah. It's so cool. It is really cool. It's so cool. It just doesn't ever check the box for me, man. I it's so funny that like how heavy I'm on the P bass train that yeah. I don't even care about a jazz bass. And I don't even care about like a the that deluxe, like the PJ thing. I just enjoy the P bass sound. I, like I think it a lot. I think certain weird tones are fun, but I just like playing a P bass, man. Yeah. Feels right, sounds good. Well, that's we that's we talked it. in the BB five thousand video too, but like this Yamaha, um, I have never had an instrument where I'm switching pickups and actually liking the sound. Yeah, and in volume and tone, it's so similar mm-hmm. that I don't feel like I'm messing front of house up. Mm-hmm. Um, the P bass pickup in that is so good, mm-hmm. and if it was just a P bass, I'd be happy with it. Totally, but the fact that I can do a jazz bass adjacent kind of sound too, that's more modern. Mm-hmm. Um, I I I love it. But with that being said, like if I only had that middle position, I don't know if I would be happy with this bass. Like I'd still want that P bass, and I'm not really at such an elevated status that I could be bringing a bunch of bases to every gig yeah, or yeah. even have time to be switching. This guy brings one bass. Oh, yeah. One you bass. bring two bases. I always bring two, man. What happens is some kid, like, you know, knocks you over while you're walking in or if a gust of wind takes your bass down, like... Has that ever happened to you? You're just standing with your bass. Oh, the wind has taken it. No, but I it happened... I have no bass anymore. No, uh, one of the first shows out, I was with Walker, a gust of wind took down his Martin... And it was on a Hercules stand. But that's an acoustic guitar. And I refuse to use those stands. I mean, it's still like a guitar that got <laughs> blown over. That's true. And it's enough for me to be like, dude, and dude, my buddy, 
uh, he was flying some tools in one of those big pelicans, like mm-hmm. in like the barge sized pelican. Mm-hmm. Uh, somehow TSA managed to put a fist size hole in the top corner of his pelican. Oh my gosh! So with that, I mean, dude, you just don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't trust it. It's it's one thing if it's always me and I take my mono bag and I put it in the bus bay. Mm-hmm. And I go to the bus bay and I pull my mono bag out. But you just don't know. Sometimes with these festival stages, you don't even know who's going to be touching your base, period. Mm-hmm. I try to be the one. But sometimes they're just grabbing, man. Yeah. Not a lot of these people yeah. that are that are hands hired really know what's going on. Mm-hmm. They're just like, you point and I'll do it. They're not mm-hmm. necessarily skilled musicians. Like, Right. You'll watch them. They'll like- uh, They just need to get it done. And there's no shame about yeah, that. Yeah, they'll just grab a like, tom. And you're yeah. like, dude, there's like a kick drum hanging off that tom. What are you doing? Like, they, oh, not really, but like you'll right. see that where you're like, man, Stop, I, just, please. I just don't think that I've seen that with symbols where they'll just grab a symbol and you're like, there's a stand hanging off that thing. What are you mm-hmm. doing, man? I watched uh, last gig, they just dropped my buddy's Black Beauty, just dropped it oh. on the concrete in Florida. It's like, dude, I just, you just don't know. Cause like, what if you're out there and. They drop your snare, and you're like, oh, we're in rural Missouri tomorrow. <laughs> what am I going to do? There's not a guitar center you yeah. can just hit. So It's fair. We're I just do so always tight bring, in a van right now. My double mono bag but, is the same size as just bringing a big SKB sca- SKP case. Well, it's so, so marginal. I have my, my, my response to part of that is I bring this like – pelican level skb case the nicest one they make Mm -hmm. super thick super durable and that's what i'm using right now when i'm traveling so you're like stack it all on it yeah which like you could throw it under the airplane i don't care like it's yeah and skb's got a good warranty on it even if you do get it dinged yeah i need to call SKB. which which it's like it's so strong that if tsa has messed this up they're they're about to have a problem on their hands like I have done everything mm-hmm. in my power to ensure that this will go well. Yeah. And I'm probably like I will put it under the plane, but I usually figure out a way to get away with not having to put it into like baggage claim or like the baggage stuff at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I still I'm rolling that thing around in the airport with me and then they go, "Sir, you can't take that on the plane." I said, "I will gate check it." And then the person takes it and puts it right. Yeah, that like minimal like the, yeah, minimal time out of my hands. Exactly, which and stinks it is because it's so huge and it's yeah. It I mean, does have wheels. You it, it has, better. It has wheels on it, it which better. is cool. Goodness yeah, gracious, true, but that better. But well, yeah. No, I always bring two because I don't want a gust of wind to take me down. And it's because I don't. I don't usually bring both bases even on stage. Every once in a while, if we've got like plenty of room on the stage and we've got the boat out and I've got time, mm-hmm. I will put my other one in my guitar player's stand boat but largely i just well if you have boats and stuff too that's to me different because you know Mm -hmm. there's going to be open spots and then i've said this before but like especially in my band i have a general rule that like i cannot bring more basses than the 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 guitarist or the front person so like if if she is not bringing two guitars I don't. F- I feel like I can roll the dice and also not take multiple guitars. See, we always bring a backup acoustic because of what happened. Yeah. Now I'd be fine if, to me, the acoustic is going to be the most susceptible to to damage for sure. Yeah. Um. But yeah. I anyway, know. that you just uh, never know. That sums up our travels. That sums up. <laughs> we talked about travel on the last one too. We um, tend to. It's just we've been. I've been just flying a lot lately. Yeah. Are you going anywhere cool here soon, or are you sticking around for a while? I'm going to Salt Lake City. Not for music. Not for music, for, for, for a production long. gig. Yeah. Um, so okay. that's kind of on my mind right now. I've, I've always got... wanted to fly into Salt Lake. I've heard it's a really nice airport. It's oh, a, cool. I think I it's the know. Delta Hub of the West, I think. Oh, sweet. I mm-hmm. made a stink and, and finally got on Delta. For whatever reason, the one I, I shouldn't talk about this on there. <laughs> but, Perfect. You know, I just requested Delta and I finally got it. Where they're, they this One of the third-party booking companies were like, well, to put you on Delta, it would be like... Two thousand something dollars to get this trip, and I literally sent them the Google flight link to something that was even less than the American Airlines one they were trying to put me on. Dang. Because I like to, you know, I like to fly Delta when when I have the choice. Absolutely. But they were like, "Oh, it's going to cost us much money. We can't do that." And I was like, "No, it won't. Here's the link." 
Yeah. And then now I get to fly Delta this Perfect. time. So I'm looking forward to that cookie. Yeah, get your cookies. Um, I also, uh, I'm a ginger ale guy on a plane. Ooh. I know we didn't get there, but I always ask for Seagram's. Because I face it like that. That's right. <laughs> so you going to Salt Lake anywhere else here soon, or are you sticking around a while? Um, I'm sticking around. There's some oh, stuff yeah. that we can't talk about yet. Love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, hitting love a, the best guy. I'm hitting a Tallahassee at the end of the month, but the plot twist of the year is I'm playing guitar on it. Oh, yeah. Because uh, we went through enough guitar fills, and I was like, fine. Sounds like you need I'll a bass do player. it. <laughs> Tucci's coming. Oh, come on. He already knows the set. Oh, a guy that fills in on, a guy that plays keys with us is going to play bass. So <laughs> no, it'll be I'm great. I electric. That'll be fun. So uh, we're doing that. It's a, a one off in Tallahassee. So a good 10 hour drive there and a good 10 hour drive back. Have fun. And then, dude, my next month is insane. Or er, two months. No, no, no. It's my May that's going to be crazy. Mm. I'll talk about we're that. We're going to have to like pre roll these videos. Buddy, I'm going to be on for most of the month. It'll be great. That'll be cool. I'm man. hitting, I'm hitting, I'm hitting good places. I'll do some solo videos. That's right. Where Carson <laughs> just turns on the camera and just starts talking about how yeah. he feels. Hey. Maybe he vlogs buying <laughs> stuff on Reverb. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody. Here's me, and I'm going to talk about something even more niche than usual. That's that's kind of my my solo videos right now. I love it. I, I'm into it. You know, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Watch it if you want. Who cares? Well, yeah. I figure uh, about to sign off. But you got anything else for the people before we uh, tell them bye? Nah. Have have nah, a bro. have a good day. Yeah. Have a good day. Maybe try uh, Google how to pour espresso. Give yourself a hug. Give it a shot. From me. All right. <laughs> Bye. See ya.